being born again. Okay, so that is uh, we are talking about. John, yes, a question. Um, when the, I, I want to uh, talk about baptism and water baptism. Uh -huh. Uh, in Luke uh, 3.16, uh -huh. and uh, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Mm -hmm. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Uh -huh. he, he never mentioned about water at all. Yeah, yeah. so so that is very interesting, and that's why a lot of... Uh, so-called Pentecostal uh, church and Pentecostal uh, denomination, they pick up that, you know, but they, they say that the most important thing is baptized in the Spirit, okay, with the fire of the Spirit. Oh, the Spirit. Yeah, that is very controversial uh, issue. That's why, you know, if we go into that, there's the whole big can of worm. You know, I'm talking about uh, the Pentecostal people said that you're born again yet, yeah? you're a Christian. Have you been baptized with the fire, with the Holy Spirit? What's the sign? Speaking in tongues. Okay, so that is going to, another can of work for us, whether we're going to go in there or not. <laughs> but, uh, so, but for me, when we study about any topic, we don't look at just one particular right. we have looked at the overall uh, Bible you know Old Testament especially New Testament mm -hmm. concerning about actually in the Old Testament they have some concept some ritual also indication it was the indication of to be born again it symbolized it okay but in the New Testament particularly sh clearly show you know how being born again uh, to be okay, so that is a very very uh, good Bible verse to to talk about baptism. Okay, so uh, I would I wouldn't take that you don't need the water baptism in order to okay. just let the Holy Spirit. But I think that is another. But I'm talking about the water, the two two type of water baptism. It's the one with the dipping your whole body in, or just use a, a part of water, maybe just a little water, <laughs> just and that, and then, and then the whole the main thing is the Holy Spirit and fire. I mean, from right. it is it's not a, it's, it's a given from God. Not not we create our own own fire or uh -huh. anything, but we accept Holy Spirit into our life. Into right. Yeah, that that kind of thing. But see, a lot of people think that you know. You remember that when yeah. when uh, Peter went to. To uh, I think Ethan, I'm not sure when some people accepted Christ. So Peter said, "Yeah, you accepted Christ, but have you accepted the Holy Spirit?" So after that, Peter was praying for them. Then the Spirit come upon them. They start to speak in tongues. So that is another verse that that's why a lot of people argue that you know, yeah, you accept Christ, you accept Christ, you are. Being a Christian, but have you been baptized by the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit? So that is another argument. That's why there's so many controversial concepts about that. And what you mentioned, that what is uh, immersion or sprinkle, or you know, in the past, all those uh, rituals create the uh, division among Christian among uh, believers. See, the, the one who believe that they have to be immersed because they have the argument say that people have to be buried. If you are not buried for three days like Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. So you got to the totally immersion, you know, immerse under the water. Mm -hmm. So that's the concept. People say no. That is only symbol. Yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's a symbol. symbol. Yeah. So I think nowadays not too much, uh, what do you call it, serious consideration that diff that much of recent difference. I look at Thailand now, uh, Presbyterian Church, they could call the uh, Baptist uh, leader and to to serve in their church, 
And then the Baptist uh, minister, they used to be immersed, you know, and now they still, they could use the sprinkle. Right. Mm -hmm. To them, they don't take it seriously now. Mm -hmm. Because that is not, that's only outward. Right. But inward it have to be the walking of the Holy Spirit. So that is more important than than outward. But some people still hold it very, very seriously. Okay, so it's up it's up to you, you know. But for me, I don't think that, you know, God will come when you go to line up to see God and God said, Are you Immersed or you sprinkle? <laughs> you already know it. <laughs> you already know it. Didn't want, it doesn't have to ask, right? Yeah, you already yeah. know you are immersed yeah. or sprinkled. Okay, I don't think that is a serious issue. But some people do. They take it very serious. You know, but for our study this morning, you know, don't argue with me too much. <laughs> we have three minutes. <laughs> you don't have to go by the clock. Yeah. Okay. So to me, I think it is. It is. Uh, I want. I want to say that thank God that our time and our uh, what do you call it? Our maturity as a Christian. The we we, we could accept other different, you know, ritual, different tradition uh, to become brother and sister. Whether you know it or not. Even now, the Catholics and the Protestants, I would say more 30, 40 years now, they have been, have a lot of communication going on within uh, Catholic and Protestant. They have a lot of meeting and talking. So now, both camps or both denominations accepted that we are brothers and sisters. And even now, we use the same Bible and even now in Thailand now, the Catholics and the Protestants, they're working together. They are open their facility, open many, many ways uh, to have that kind of uh, uh, supporting the brothers, brotherhoods of two mainline denomination, Catholic and Protestant. So that's a blessing, you know, for, for all of us not to uh, being divided because we have a different tradition. Okay, that is a good one. Okay, let's uh, come to the last point, that application. Uh, for me, I just want to say that born again is the something change and grow from inside out. You know, when you said, I'm a born again, is from inside out. You know, there's something that happened within you. Uh, the version that we translated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, or maybe 17 or 18, said, Whoever in Christ that he be uh, to become creation. You know, old things pass and now become new things. I remember the old version is that you become new, you know, but the later translation said become, that it takes process, you know, before uh, 40 some years ago when I just become Christian, I always thought because that Bible translation said that when you're in Christ, you become new. So my conclusion, as soon as I being baptized, I become a new person. But then I realized that no, I'm, I'm still the same. You know, my feeling, my thinking, everything's still the same. But I like the new translation that you become. And slowly, year by year, in 10 years, 20 years, you become better and better. You're growing. You know, you're changing, growing. Uh, that's what I like that translation. In other words, Born again is not that overnight something that become, you know. Uh, we are talking about two terms, right? Uh, what do you call it? Justification and sanctification. So we have to go back to that. So justification is you snap your fingers. That's it. You sign the name. The ad ad adoption, 
you know, you sign a paper, you become the children of that uh, family right away. But it takes time for you to adjust into that family, right? It takes some time. So I was a Buddhist, but when I accept Christ, I was baptized, I become Christian. But my old stuff as a Buddhist still stick with me. My thinking, my all kind of philosophy of life still there. But slowly, 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 to, uh, to learn, to grow, to change, to be more Christian, okay, and less and less Buddhist. Uh, so that is the process of changing, you know, from inside out. And then we cannot be judged by outward life alone. When you want to uh, see whether it is uh, a born-again person, a born-again Christian, you cannot judge from their out, outward appearance or outward lifestyle. You cannot. Okay, you have to really know that what's in there. Because God told, God told uh, Samuel, said, man look at from outside, but God look at inward, inside. So that's why being born again, you have to judge from the inside, okay? But if you said you are born again, but your outward life is bad, then you have question mark too, right? But, but you don't expect them to be perfect right away, but it takes process growing, okay? So I have to be wise in uh, judging people. Okay, divine love is an indication born of God because first, first John, verse four, uh, chapter four, seven to eight, said that if you are born of God, you have love. If you don't know how to love, if you hate your brother, you are not born again. But if you're born again, you have the sense of love for others. Because love comes from God, and God is love. So if you really say that you are born again Christian, there are many ways to judge, but one way you can judge yourself, you evaluate yourself. Your love is growing. Love for others, love for your neighbors, love for your, you know, people around you. If you feel like, yeah, you're getting, you're less selfish, you are less self-centered. You are thinking of other people's benefits more than you are. If that's slowly growing to in the life, then you're pretty sure that you have a new life. You are, you know, be a new Christian, a new new uh, person. Okay, and love for God and one another deeply from the heart. First Peter, Peter said that you are born through the divine uh, word of God. So if you are born again that, you have that love for one another and deeply love one another deeply from the heart that you, you really care, you know, and uh, yeah, because if, if you say, I'm born again Christian, but then you hate people. You go around, criticize people, you go around and uh, what? Uh, try to take advantage of people, you don't care how much, you know, uh, they need your love, they need your care, they need your support, but you don't care. So then you have to ask yourself, are you really born again Christian? According to Peter, Peter said, if you're born again through the word of God, you have the love for others and love others deeply from the heart. Okay, that's what Peter said. And um, <clears throat> then Romans 12, second said, if you have changed, your attitude changed from the heart, then you will know what is good, what is pleasing God, what is excellent. So in other words, those who are born again Christian, automatically, you start to have the desire to want to know what the will of God in your life. 
you want to know what is good, you know, in the sight of God. You want to please Him. You want to live the best you can to glorify Him. You know, to give Him that glory. So that will indicate that you are new birth. You are spiritual birth. So that is, you know, it is an indication that you do have a new life. Born again. You know, in the last few few years, you see the politician in America. They want to be elected as the uh, govern, government official. They use the word, "Oh, I'm I'm a born again Christian." You know, a few years ago, right? Twenty some thirty years. They always everyone want to say that I'm born again Christian. Why? They want the Christian votes, the evangelical. Uh, group want to uh, President Reagan got elected by majority of Christian voted for him and uh, so after that a lot of people just think that if you want to uh, get the evangelical Christian votes then you have to say that you are born again Christians mm -hmm. and then after that the uh, <clears throat> The uh, economic or the uh, the general society, if you say that, you know, if you want to to sell your products, they just use the word very loosely, say that this is the born again stuff, you know. So that is not what we meant to be born again. To be born again is not worthy thing. It's not thing that around. You know, to take advantage of the term or misuse the term actually is something Jesus says, heavenly thing. It's something that we cannot totally explain, like the winds. Where the wind comes from, where the wind goes, no one knows. So is born again in the spirit, the same thing. So if you really want to know more about born again, you could. Go and study, and also try not to lock yourself into one particular concept or any idea. Let yourself be open. Let your mind be ex try to understand and try to uh, study as widely as possible, so that you can gather all the information. Then you could understand the issue of being born again. And then, and then there are so many Bible verses, you can use them and to help you to see different perspectives. And then you can make a, your personal conclusion, what baptism means to you. And through your own personal experience, you know, some people experience maybe not like your own, so you have to find out get all the information about born again as much as you could and then to to reflect upon your own personal experience then you pretty sure you you get it okay understand if not interact interacting with some people that have have the experience to to compare and to to study okay so that you get more comfortable the term being born again and I hope that you, know, you, you feel comfortable that you'll be born again. And especially, let me, the last uh, thought, for those who are born in a Christian family, sometimes it's very difficult to really know that you're born again Christian. Sometimes you're a big question mark, you know, but just, Take some time to study and reflect and ask questions, interacting with people that have some you know, experience to help him. Okay, and uh, I have several people that in that such a background come and talk to me. And very difficult for them. Sometimes they feel they're not sure whether they're reborn again because I'm a Christian all my life. How can I'm not a Christian, I'm born again. What does that mean? 
So this create a lot of confusion and a lot of problem. So I hope you're not in that situation. If you do, don't be hesitate, study and find out. And then God will help you, make you uh, comfortable about your new life that you found in Christ. Okay, God bless you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. Yeah.